Hey guys, it's Kelly and welcome back to our channel. For today's video, I'm doing something super exciting. This is the 22 things that I learned in 22 years. So today is actually the 28th, but tomorrow on the 29th, I turn 23, which is so crazy. I cannot believe I am already 23. I actually filmed a video like this last year. I will have a card above just so you guys can go watch it. And it is the 21 things that I learned in 21 years but I am just so confused how I've already been alive for 23 years. But I'm sorry if there is a ton of stuff that is overlapping from last year. I didn't go and rewatch that video just because I just wanted to be raw and real and just say the things that I've learned. But I'm just going to jump straight on into it because I don't want this video to be too, too long. So the first thing that I learned in 22 years is to let go of toxic people and toxic things. I know that those are very <laughs> different, like people to objects, but yeah, let go of anybody, anyone that is toxic to you. If they make you feel bad about yourself, anything, I have done that a lot, especially in well, more so when I was 21, but you know, 22 was the year that I have had no toxic people in my life. And if there were toxic people in my life, they were pushed out gladly, closed the door on them, don't need them in my life. But yeah, 22, <laughs> honestly, best year. And then obviously with things, if you guys didn't know, Brendan and I moved to more natural cleaning, like we use vinegar and stuff. Honestly, I feel better about it just for us but also the environment because obviously using harsh chemicals isn't good for the environment the second thing that i learned in 22 years is to work for what you want and i'm just going to say it i'm sorry if it offends you guys but i feel like our generation gen z or the millennials are a little bit entitled you are not going to be handed everything, work for what you want, take risks. Honestly, being a YouTuber, trying to be a YouTuber is honestly one of the biggest risks I've ever made. Obviously, I flew across the country and got married to my husband, but I feel like putting myself out there and talking to a camera is really one of the biggest things that I've ever taken a risk for and this is something that I truthfully want and I'm working towards it. So work for what you want and stop worrying if you're getting in the way of other people because they're just in your way and you're in your own way by worrying about that stuff. The third thing that I learned in 22 years is to stop sitting on the sidelines of your life. Your life isn't going to start once you're married. Your life isn't going to start when you have kids. You're not going to have a great life just because you're traveling. Work on what you have in the current situation that you are in. Stop worrying about the things that you don't have or the things that, I don't know, just make you feel bad for having them when other people don't have them. Honestly, I feel very entitled living in San Diego and living in an apartment because there are so many homeless people here and I'm very grateful for where we are. I don't know, I'm just very thankful for where we are and I'm just tired of sitting on the sidelines worrying about like oh my god i don't have a degree yet i don't have a house yet like what are we gonna do it's just like live in the now and obviously worry about those things but don't let them consume your life and take every part of your life the fourth thing that i learned in 22 years is that comparison is the thief of joy i know that it is so easy to compare yourself and it's even easier to say to stop comparing yourself than to actually do it but stop comparing your life to somebody else's life your relationship to another person's relationship and just everything like worry about if you like where you are and not worrying about where somebody else is and seeing that like oh well i should be married by now i should have kids by now i should be doing x y and z by now but in reality your life is on its timeline and everything happens for a reason and just because you aren't there yet doesn't mean that you never will be. So stop comparing yourself. I know that it is so much easier to say than it is to do that. I say it all the time and I still compare myself. But don't compare yourself to somebody else's highlight reel is really what I'm trying to say because everything that you see online is somebody else's highlight reel. The fifth thing that I learned in 22 years is to stop explaining yourself. 
you do not need to explain why you want to do something, how you're going to do it, all of the other things to somebody else. If you want to do something, you better be working your tushy off to get there because that's the only way that you're going to get there. Not by telling people, oh, I'm going to do this, oh, I'm going to do this, oh, I'm going to do that. Just do it. The sixth thing that I learned in 22 years is go to freaking therapy. I don't care if you are happy. I don't care if you are sad. I don't care if you have anxiety. I don't care if you have depression. I don't care if you are literally just a perfect person. Go to therapy. I don't care if you have a great relationship or if you have a rocky relationship or anything. Just go to therapy. Going to therapy does not mean that you are weak. It does not mean that you have everything figured out or you don't have literally anything figured out. It means that you are putting your best interest before anything else. It's not selfish. It's not a weak moment. It's, it's literally the strongest thing you can do is by going to therapy and realizing that, hey, yeah, I might have everything together right now, but it doesn't mean that in a couple months my world might be coming crashing down. So go to therapy, do all the things to keep where you are, where you are. And if you are at a low point where I have been many, many times, going to therapy will only help. I just, just wanna stress that. And also going to therapy isn't just like a, a puzzle piece. Like you go to one therapist and it's perfect. You might have to go to 20 therapists before you're like, yeah, this one will work. Or you might go to therapists and they're great for a while and then you realize, I need a new thing. I need someone new with a new perspective and just new tips and everything. Like, don't worry about that. Worry about getting your freaking foot in the door. The seventh thing I learned in 22 years is to do whatever you want. I know that this comes all full circle with a lot of the other things, but do whatever you want, whatever you want, not what your family wants you to do, not what your significant other wants you to do. Do what you want. If you wanna get married young, get married young. If you wanna have a small wedding where only your immediate family flies across the country to be there, do it. That's what I did. If you wanna move across the country to be with your husband, do it. If you want to never get married, do that. If you wanna have kids, do it. If you wanna have no kids, do it. Like, just do what you want. Stop worrying about what the world is telling you to do. If you wanna to go to college, go to college. If you don't wanna to go to college right now, don't go to college right now. It's really that simple, but I feel like our generation has just been forced to follow a, a line, follow the train, and just continue, like, follow the leader. Literally, we used to play that game all the time in school, like, follow the leader. Like, you don't have to always be in this path. You can step out of the path and maybe get back in later on in life, but you don't have to stay on that path. The eighth thing that I learned is to treat yourself the way that you want your future daughter to treat herself. Obviously, I want kids, so that is relevant to me, but if you don't want kids, just picture if you wanted kids or if you had a daughter, how would you want your daughter to treat herself? You'd probably not want your daughter to feel bad about herself and talk negatively about herself and get herself in situations that she doesn't want to be in and just different things like that. Just treat yourself how you'd want your daughter to treat herself. And I know that it's a lot easier to say than do, but just picture yourself as your future daughter and obviously I feel like our moms can probably watch this video and be like yeah I wish my daughter would treat herself like the way that I would want her to be treated so just treat yourself the way that you want your daughter to treat herself the ninth thing that I learned in 22 years is that you have to love yourself I know that is again so much easier to say than it is to do it because I honestly I've never had that much that grade of self-worth. I I really hate talking about this stuff because there has been multiple times in my life where I've just hated everything about myself and it's just gotten to the point where it's just exhausting. It's exhausting hating so much about yourself when you can't do anything about it. Like yeah you can lose weight, yeah you can do your makeup, yeah you can do your hair, but 
at the same point, you're always going to take your makeup off. Your hair is going to be a little whack sometimes. Like you're going to fluctuate in your weight because nobody is freaking perfect. Like just love yourself for who you are, where you are, and just everything that you are. Like I'm sure you can write down five positive things about yourself right now. Actually do that because I think that it's very important. So get a piece of paper, write it in your phone. I don't care, just do it right now. But yeah, I feel like we as a society have just thought that loving ourselves is a sign of being a terrible person pretty much. Just being like selfish and everything. But in reality, like the best thing you can do is love yourself. Because when you love yourself, you love others. When you love yourself, you put your best foot forward. When you love yourself, you're just more positive about every situation. You find the positives in everything and also try to do that. Like you can, again, I fake it till I make it. I do not love every part of my body. I don't love everything about who I am. And I have made a lot of mistakes in my life. I'm 22 years old, almost 23. And yeah, I'm not perfect. I'm not gonna say that I am. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like I am. It's so much easier to just let that stuff go. It's easier to only think about positive things. It's easier to love yourself when you're not just getting down on yourself for wearing your hair wrong or failing a test or doing all these things when you're trying your best. Just try your best and stop talking bad about yourself. The 10th thing that I learned in 22 years is to stop living in your comfort zone. Again, I feel like this encompasses literally everything. But living in your comfort zone is just doing all of the basic things, following the leader. But if you want something, truly go for it. Like you really only have one life to live. And would you rather live your life following the other person in front of you and just doing exactly what they're doing? Or would you rather take the risk? You can always jump back in that line. It's not like you are always once you're out, you're out and you can't do anything to fix your life and do everything. Like, no, you can get out and go into a different line. You can get in another line. You can get in another line. You don't have to do one thing and always be that one thing. Now, obviously, if you have a nine to five job and that's like your sole thing, like that's how you pay the bills, that's how you do everything, then stick with that. But add something else. If you want to start a side hustle, do that on the side and then maybe hopefully that thing will go up and that's how you make your nine to five living. You don't have to be an all or nothing type of person. I have always been an all or nothing type of person. You can do both and help yourself get there faster by doing both. The 11th thing that I learned in 22 years is to dress how you want. I still struggle with this because I am not a size two. I am a, a lot to love. I have a lot to love on my body. And honestly, wearing the clothes that I want has honestly been a lot harder said than done. But wear what you want. Like you don't have to wear a crop top and leggings if you don't want to wear a crop top and leggings. If you just want to wear a dress every day, wear a dress every day. If you want to wear a t-shirt every day, do it, but make sure that you feel good about yourself because in order, I feel like when you're dressing for success, you're dressing for success in your head as well. The 12th thing that I learned in 22 years is to enjoy the small things. I swear, there are so many small things that happen in your life that you just take for granted because you're so worried about the bigger picture, but enjoying those small things helps you get to the bigger picture a lot faster because you already are so happy and you always think that the bigger picture is going to make you the happiest, but in reality, your happiness has nothing to do with what you want and what you actually just bring into the world. Like if you bring happiness and attract happiness, you're gonna be happier. If you attract like being miserable and working really hard until exhaustion, you're just gonna be exhausted. That's all you're gonna be at the end. So just worry about what you want and all the small little tiny things at the same time and you'll be happy throughout that process. Like going to Chick-fil-A or going to Chipotle with your significant other and getting just food in the car. Like that is a small moment but that moment can mean so much. Appreciate the small things because it makes the bigger things a lot better. 
And if you don't appreciate the small things, the big things probably aren't gonna be that great. The 13th thing that I learned in 22 years is to marry your best friend. Because marriage is not amazing all the time. Marriage is hard, but marrying your best friend makes all those hard times a lot easier because even if you fell out of love or you just are angry, it's like you still have your best friend to goof around with. And yeah, I we've only been married for a little over a year and obviously we've gotten in a lot of fights. Like we went from not living with each other to living with each other and not really having any family around. So yeah, we're just stuck around with each other and we get a little a little bit of advice and um, a lot of them have to do with the Navy. So thank you Navy, but like appreciate you, but like not really at all. Brendan has a high stress job and they just decide to call him and sometimes like randomly, you know, and just like ruin the things that we planned that we didn't really ever get to plan because you can't plan anything in the military. But just marry your best friend and it'll make all those small inconveniences so much better because even when I am so annoyed with the military just ruining all of our married plans, I just have my best friend to laugh with and get mad at with and just do everything with. And I feel like marrying your best friend also helps with communication and marriage, so. The 14th thing that I learned in 22 years is to forget the past. I feel like this is so much easier said than done, but again, with like having toxic people in your life and just holding yourself back on things that you want, just forget that stuff. Like worrying about that every day isn't going to do anything for you. Like I have some people in my life that I am so glad that they are out of my life, but I constantly think about them and think like, well, I wonder if they're doing well. And like, honestly, just stop. Like there's no point. If somebody was that toxic that you pushed them out of your life, then worrying about them and letting them stay in your life like that isn't worth it. The 15th thing is that social media is not real. Again, like I said before, social media is a highlight reel of everybody else's life. And I'm sure you also do the same thing. You post only the highlights and then you overthink about seeing all these positive things on other people's social media's accounts. But in reality, they're probably thinking the exact same thing. If I'm going to be honest, I love the way we got married, but anytime I see somebody have like a big wedding and all these other things, I get like this little ounce of like, oh, I wish I had that. And then I'm like, no, I don't. I didn't want that. That's why I had what I had. Like, just like take yourself out of your head sometimes and figure out why you're upset about those things. And if it's actually something that's justifiable, then talk about it, do something about it. But like, just, it's their highlight reel. Just like, like I'm sure if you actually talked to them and figured out like, and like voiced your opinion on stuff, like they'd probably have the same opinion. Like they wouldn't just be like, oh yeah, I have a perfect life. Like nobody has a perfect life. The 16th thing is to love people. I feel like, especially recently, we have started this whole cancel culture for some reason where we cancel people that don't have the same opinions as us. I feel like this is something that a lot of people need to learn today because I just see cancel culture so much recently. Like everybody's canceling this person, canceling that person for doing something that's not the norm or having a separate opinion that's not likely to be heard by a lot of people but honestly I feel like taking the energy to cancel somebody just is just so much hatred like I feel like it's even worse than the person that like did something wrong or I don't know if they did something wrong most of the times it's like I don't know what they did honestly I don't really read those things because I feel like it takes way too much energy out of me but I feel like the people that are doing the canceling are so, 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 so wrong. Like it's like if somebody does something that either is a mistake or something in their past and you are spending your time to just dig it up and to dig into their skin for it, there's something wrong with you. And I'm sorry if that's you and you're watching this video and you hate me now and you want to cancel me, but I just internalize it. Internalize that you can't see somebody else make a mistake and realize, oh, well, they probably made a mistake. Like, I shouldn't drill at them for this because like, let's face it, none of us are perfect. 
none of us do things perfectly 100% of the time. We are going to fail. And think about like think about it this way. If you are failing at something and somebody else continually pokes and probes you for it, how would you feel? Like I I don't know. I just like there are some people that I'm like, all right, whatever. I don't really care about them. They don't seem like that great of a person, but just stop watching them. Stop hanging around them. Don't cancel them. Don't spend your time and your money and all this other stuff. I don't know if people are spending money. I don't know. I feel like they have to, to cancel somebody because it's just taking your life away. It's not going to cancel their life because they're not like actually going anywhere. And also it just spreads such negativity around the world. The 17th thing that I learned in 22 years is to forgive yourself. I feel like this goes very directly with the last one. If you are the person that is being canceled, forgive yourself for those mistakes and apologize. If you are the person doing the canceling, forgive yourself for realizing that this is just wasted time. Like canceling somebody is just wasted time. Forgive yourself for that and then apologize. Apologize for picking and probing at somebody else. And yeah, but yeah, if it's for yourself, apologize to yourself. Honestly, I feel like it's 2020 and people forgot how to apologize at this point. So let's just like bring that back. Like 2021, we're just gonna always say sorry and like mean it and not like be like, oh, I'm sorry, but like, like you've done this to me. Like that is gaslighting. Can we, can we remember that and agree with that one? Like that's gaslighting. 18th thing that I learned in 22 years is that you don't have to have it all figured out. You can be 22 and have absolutely no idea what you want to do with your life. You can be 32 and have absolutely no idea what you're going to do with your life. And you can be 70 and still have no idea if you're like, oh, what should I do with my life? Like you might start a whole business at 70. Like who, who knows? I'm only 22, almost 23. I'm turning 23 tomorrow, but you know, like, <sighs> Like you just don't have to have it all figured out. You don't have to have a degree in something and tell yourself like, oh, I'm gonna have to work in this degree for the rest of my life. Like you could get a degree in teaching and be 23, 24 and get that degree. And then by the time you're 30, be back in school getting a different degree. Like you don't have to have it all figured out. And I feel like I have that mentality that I have to have it all figured out, which is really the big reason why I don't have a degree right now because I go back and forth and again, I've said it before and I'll say it again, but I am an all or nothing type of attitude and I'm really trying to reiterate that and figure out like where that went wrong and why I think I have that mentality, but you don't have to have that mentality. You can get a degree, use it for five years, pay off your student loans and go back to school. You don't have to be in that path for your whole life. You can get out of the line. Let's remember that. You can get out of the line. The 19th thing that I learned in 22 years is that your past does not define you. Again, I feel like this goes with cancel culture and everything like that, but I feel like all like the canceling comes from like past things that people have said. But in reality, I feel like a lot of people change, you know, like people can change and their opinions changes and everything else changes and picking it probing at somebody's past while they're saying something completely different now is absolutely ridiculous that's just like saying like you don't grow up from like the age five to like the age 15 where you have like concrete understanding of things to then when you're 15 to the age of 25 and pretending like you have not changed at all during that time people can change people do change and you do change like forgive yourself for your past, move on from it. You are not your past. When I was 14 years old, I wanted to be a princess. At 23 years old, I don't think that that's gonna happen. That does not mean that my past defines me and now I have to become a princess at some point. I mean, I would love to be a princess, but I really realized that you really can't be a princess unless you're born into royalty, right? Like I. Like that's right, correct? And like when I was in second grade, I told myself at 18, I was gonna change my name to Lizzie McGuire. My name is not Lizzie McGuire, you know? Like your past does not define you and you don't have to do everything that you said that you were gonna do in the past. So yeah, like <laughs> you can change, 
the person next to you can change. The people that you don't like, you don't agree with, they can change. You don't have to put people in a bubble and pretend as if they cannot change. The 20th thing that I learned in 22 years is to stop caring so much. I feel like whenever I say stop caring so much is to stop being a Karen so much. Like I feel like the people that care so much about things, you're really being a Karen. Like just stop caring so much. I hate myself. Yeah, just stop caring so much. There's no point of worrying about literally everything that's going on in the world. Obviously, there are important things that we should be worrying about, but I'm not gonna talk about them right now because that's not important. But just stop caring about little freaking things. They're not important and over focusing on them really makes you a Karen. So do we wanna be Karens? I don't think so. So let's stop being Karens, worry about what we actually have to worry about, worrying about things that other people are doing really isn't helping. Obviously wear a freaking mask, but you know, we're gonna move on. The 21st thing that I learned in 22 years is to learn to say no. I feel like in the past, since quarantine happened, I feel like saying no should become something very important because the people that are getting the virus are probably not following social distancing, you know? So just learn to say no, stay home, wear a mask when you have to go out, and really don't see people that don't live in your house or don't, I don't know, aren't, are sick, are, or haven't been social distancing, but just learn to say no. I know I'm relating that to right now and the time that we are in, but just learn to say no. Like learn to be somebody who can say no and be okay with it. You don't have to feel bad for not wanting to go out to the bars with your friends. You don't have to feel bad for not wanting to hang out with people because they've been seeing other people. I don't know, just learn to say no and realize why you're saying no. You're saying no because there's a pandemic going on right now. Like, just because it's not bad where you live doesn't mean it won't be eventually. Like, San Diego went from being good and we opened to everything's closing down again. We're probably going to be in shutdown mode again. So, yeah, just learn to say no and you are not above a virus. So, let's just remember that one. And the 22nd thing that I learned in 22 years is to stop apologizing for being yourself. I feel like this continually goes with everything because that's really like I have my life and these are the things that I've learned in my life. Stop caring about what other people have to say about you. If you're doing what you wanna do and what you love and doing everything that will get you to the path of where you love if you're not there yet, then stop caring why other people or why other people have to say about it. Like there's no point of dwelling on it. Be unapologetically yourself and stop worrying about what other people are saying. But yeah, that's everything that I learned in 22 years. And I really hope that you guys appreciate it and liked this video. And I'm so thankful that you guys are watching it because that's how you're seeing this end slate. But yeah, if you guys are not subscribed yet, please feel free to hit the subscribe button down below and yeah, I hope you guys have a great day and a great year, whatever age you guys are at. And yeah, bye guys.